Well, what could be the sneakers of tomorrow sold for nearly $100,000 yesterday on eBay. The world's only pair of Virgin America first class shoes features seat belt buckles, a video display, and a USB phone charger. <laughs> That's wow. All you need right there. That's all you need, says Charlie. A recent report predicts the global footwear market will reach nearly $115 billion by 2022 in today's morning rounds. Anna Warner looks at which sneakers are the best fit for you and whether advertising promises hold up. Anna, good morning. Good morning. Well, we've all walked into the sporting goods store and seen that massive wall of shoes. Consumers are faced with seemingly countless choices. We wanted to know, are any of those innovations really helping you to run longer or jump higher? And are those expensive sneakers any better? Well, we went behind the scenes to look for answers. Three, two, one, go. We're at the Portland, Oregon headquarters of sportswear maker Adidas, where footwear developers are using motion capture technology to design their latest shoes. Mechanical engineer Elise Hall explains how it works. The blue kind of represents areas that aren't stretching as much. It's called Aramis, the same technology NASA has used to analyze the stress on the outer hulls of space shuttles. So here, they look at how materials stretch on the foot while it's in motion. We're using it to map the body. Um, from head to toe. Andy Barr is Adidas Global Category Director. We've used it in the latest running products to show the way that the skin stretches and moves. By knowing more about the body, you can make better products. They've used it while developing shoe lines like the Ultra Boost and Alpha Bounce, with new materials in the soles that the company claims give wearers an extra boost when running or walking. Their ideas, Adidas hopes, will give it an edge in the competitive athletic shoe sector, a market worth an estimated $99 billion last year. Manufacturers tout their latest innovations with prices to match. Some shoes sell for upwards of $300, but are they worth it? The way a shoe performs is probably not related to the price of the shoe. University of Nevada biomechanics professor John Mercer studies athletic shoes. So if I spend $150, that shoe may be no better than a $50 shoe? Well, it depends. The problem with the shoe industry is everyone needs a little different shoe. At Mercer's lab in Las Vegas, he's analyzed dozens of shoe brands and styles. What year are these? Everything from the original Nikes. Yeah, probably early 1970s. To unusual underwater running shoes with gills. And if you can increase resistance, that's good. His latest study examines these new ultra cushion shoes called Hoka One Ones. Did they reduce impact for runners? Mercer found it depended on the person and wearing them, which he says is what he's generally found for athletic shoes on the whole. We take one pair of shoes and we put it in 10 different people. Everyone could run a little bit differently in those shoes. So it might work for one person, that shoe, yeah. and wouldn't work for somebody else. That's right. Some shoe companies have gotten into trouble by making generalized claims. The Federal Trade Commission sued shoe companies Reebok and Skechers over their easy tone and shape up shoe lines. The government found advertising claims that the rounded shoe could help firm your backside and promote weight loss to be false and unsubstantiated. Both companies settled for millions of dollars but with no admission of liability. So when somebody says to you, John, what kind of shoe should I buy? Well, I tell them, first of all, don't be brand loyal and don't be model loyal. That means you gotta be open to trying different types of shoes to figure out what is going to work for you. He recommends taking shoes for a test run. And if you're a serious athlete, maybe even have an expert analyze your running style. Demand is outpacing the supply at the moment. Bar at Adidas hints there's changes coming in the future. I think the future is going to be a more personalized experience. So, you know, trying to personalize product to your specific running style. And how do you do that? Well, uh, that's under wraps for the moment. Now, Hoka had no comment on Mercer's study, but as we said, the research suggests that the best shoe for you is going to be, unfortunately, an individual choice, which makes it so hard. However, he does say that 90% of people who run are heel strikers. Hit the ground with your heel foot. So, like the shoes I'm wearing, for example, these Hoka Ultra Cushioned, yeah. mm -hmm. that's a heel striker shoe, also these Asics these Adidas mm -hmm. heel striker shoes. However, some proportion of the population runs uh, 
four front strikers. You hit the okay. front of your foot yeah. first. And he says, so you want to be looking for something more like this, uh, the Nike, this type of Nike here, or the New Balance, a flatter sole. And the difference is these have a flatter sole, mm -hmm. and these, which I know that mm -hmm. you like, have more of a cushioned yeah. heel. I run half marathons in these. They work pretty well. Uh, Charlie, oh, resident expert. What do you? What, I know. Yeah. I mean, Charlie, we, Charlie. We can't. We got some Under Armour, oh, don't yeah, yeah. we? Yeah. These, are under, these are just very, very comfortable. I mean, not necessarily for running for me, but they're very, very comfortable. And stylish, yeah. too. Yeah, and, stylish. and they look good with a, a nice suit. <laughs> Thank you so much. For a heel striker like, like For a heel <laughs> striker like me. <laughs> they give could, me power. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Rose with his legs on the table. Thank you, man. I like He's it. He's copying what you like did it. once <laughs> before. Absolutely. We have fun here. <laughs>